Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, it's Papa. Today is uh, we're gonna do butter garlic chicken thighs. Uh, you put the chicken thighs in a cast iron like this. Make sure you grease the pan real good. So, next thing is, is you get your sticks of butter. We use uh, Kerrigal. That's pretty good Irish butter. It's very good. And you got to have the skin on it because this is how you do it. So what you do is take your finger here, peel the skin back a little bit, just a little bit, not to get you a pocket. See how that is? It's a pocket. Put a pocket in there. Then you take a little bit of garlic, A little bit of garlic inside there. Just like that. A little bit of garlic inside. Just move it around. You take a chunk of butter. Bam. Put it right inside there. Close the lid on it. Now it'll melt into there. It'll be butter and garlic melt into it. So I'm going to do all these real quick. and See how everybody's weather's doing today. Hope everybody's weather's doing better than ours. We're worried about our plants. Because the cold weather came in. It's windy outside. If it wasn't so windy, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, the windy weather got us. I know everybody else is getting different kind of stuff than we are. I feel bad for y'all. <laughs> I know how it is. Up here, our weather is strange, so we just... We just go buy whatever we get, you know. Mm -hmm. But we got cold crops out, so they should be all right. That's what I'm doing right now. Just peeling the skin back. A little bit of garlic in it. Just like that. Just put a little bit of garlic inside. Stick a thing of butter inside of it. Just like that. That's all I'm doing right now. Keeps the vampires away. It's a vampire dish. Anti vampire dish. <laughs> It's a lot of work, but I love doing it because that's my my passion. This is my passion. I love doing this. I do this every day. Yes, you can cook this not in a crock pot. You can cook this in a crock. Uh, we got we got this big cooker. It's like a um. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Big Red. We call it Big Red. They seen it in the Easter video. Yeah. We got that big giant cooker. You can put these down in there and put it on at 200 and go to work. Because it's just like an oven. And go to work and come home that night and have it already cooked for you. I can do it both ways for you if you guys want me to to show you. Because when it's hot out, we don't cook inside very much because we'll cook with crock pots. and If we cook on the stove or in the oven, this house turns into a sweat box. It is pretty, pretty hot in here. So I got all that butter in there, shoved the inside of it, nice and neat. Oh, this piece don't want to go. It's fighting me. Get in there. There we go. So, 
The butter is for moisture content inside of it. So the next thing I'm going to do, I got me some fresh rosemary. Break me up some fresh rosemary. Yeah, I got some. Whoops, sorry for the noise. Some fresh thyme. Depends on how much you want to put on it, it's up to you. A lot of your chickens, if you use thyme and rosemary on it, it gives it a sweet taste. To me, it does, and everybody here at home where, where I'm at love it because when I put thyme and rosemary on it, they love it. They like the taste of it, so I just do it for them. You just sprinkle it across the top of it. And there's a the rosemary and thyme. And you take some granulated garlic. Where'd my bowl go? I use my big tablespoon. So you take a tablespoon of that. One tablespoon of that. This poor pepper pours out fast. <sighs> it's giving me a hassle. It ain't want to cooperate. A half tablespoon of that is black pepper. Two tablespoons of uh, chicken base. And then my OMG Kinder seasoning, roasted chicken seasoning, because you're roasting it in the oven, even if you roast it in big red, like we do. One tablespoon of that. And you mix this all up. And the reason why I use chicken base, it's less salt. This base is. We've got a lot of salt in it. Like most bases do. If you read most of the bases around around the world that you're at they have a lot of salt in them I don't know this company right here I've used it for years and it's a very good base I use it in my make my homemade broths and stuff like that the family loves it And this is what I'm doing right now. Just mixing it up real good. And this is what I do. I sprinkle over top of it. And if I have leftovers, I save it. And I'm probably going to have leftovers. But... For the next chicken I do, or chicken broth, or chicken I bake in the oven, 
I just save it. Add too much seasoning. And the last thing I use, this is my twist. Give it a smoky taste. So we're not cooking outside. And you want a little smoky taste? Just sprinkle over top of the chicken. It ain't gonna hurt it. It's actually pretty good. My family loves it. And you let this marinate until if you're gonna bake this in the oven, let it marinate in the refrigerator until about one o'clock and then you put it on and let it cook until your dinner time. It'll be tender, juicy, and delicious. But if you're gonna do this in like the big red you saw on Easter, you're gonna put it in that. You don't have to marinate, just put it all in there, stick it in there, turn it on at 200, 275. About 250 is the best best bet you want to do it because that's how much a uh, slow crock cooks is about 250. And if you put it on a high crock, it's about 300. But if you're going to put this in the big red like I got and you're going to cook it all day while you're at work, I would put it on at 200 so it can cook real slow. So it won't cook too fast. And by the time you get home, you pull it out. It'll be nice and moist. Beautiful chicken. And it'll be nice and delicious for you all. Instead of overcooked, falling apart too much. Dried out. Dried out, yeah. But this is going to go in the oven at 1 o'clock. And when I get done with that, I'll show you what it looks like. I don't know what else I'm going to make tonight. Mom is going to make some homemade biscuits. Yeast biscuits. And the kids love them. They look... They're supposed to be white biscuits. But they turn out looking like wheat biscuits. We don't know why. But they're actually real delicious. So if you want to see that, we can show you that too. In a few. But I appreciate all the new subscribers. Makes me feel good. Appreciate all the comments you guys give me. Oh, that's my tablet. It always does that. Even though it's not even the volume ain't even on. It's very strange tablet. But I do appreciate all the comments you give me. I do appreciate it. It's a lot of work to do this. Um, like a lot of YouTubers say, it's a... You got to do what you got to do to get things out for your fans and followers. And I try to do my best. I'm not a 100% perfect person, but I try. I've been cooking for almost all my life. Almost. I drove trucks, worked on a farm, worked at a sandwich shop. Two sandwich shops and two gas stations. So, and McDonald's and McDonald's. See, you learn over the years. I worked at high end restaurants, low end restaurants, medium, high end. Medium, high end's all right. It's they try to be too fancy, I'm trying to outbeat the big boys, but it ain't gonna work. But this is just a normal recipe I came up with. I what I do is I read read uh, recipes like everybody else does in this world. That's part of being a cook. You read recipes, and then you turn it around and make it different. You make it your recipe. This is this ain't you know the way they they did it half some of this half that way, but some of it ain't done what I did. I did it totally different. I put it as a twist. That's what I call it. I look at a recipe. I sit down and I study it. You can ask mama. I'll sit down and study it. And then I'll look at it and I'll be like, I can do it this way to make it better. And I can do it this way to make it better. And that's what I usually do. And actually, 
when I put it on this table, first thing they're going to say, where'd you learn this at? That's what they're going to say to me. They're going to ask me where I learned this at. And I'll tell them, I got it off in a recipe book. And I sat down and read it. And I figured out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, to make it better for the family. That's what I usually do. But I'm proud of what I do. Like, if you got a recipe that you want me to find, look up and turn it around, let me know. You tell me what the recipe's name, I'll look it up, I'll sit down and read it, and see what I can twist it into. I can twist it to make it taste different than what that recipe says. You can make that recipe and then make my recipe, I can tell you what, that recipe you make the first time, that's from that recipe, you'd be like, wow, this is different. And I'm being serious. And I've done that to these guys before. I made a regular recipe, and then I put my twist on another recipe as the same recipe. And they liked the one I did the twist, then the more they liked the one I didn't do a twist. And I'm being honest, you can ask everybody here, they'll tell you. It's because that's the way you're supposed to be if you're a cook or a chef. You don't have to follow the recipe at all. You could turn it around and make it the way your family's going to love it. That's the way it's supposed to be. And that's how you do for guests. If you're working at a restaurant and then there's a new dish out and your chef tells you, Hey, I want to try something new. So this is what you do. You you look at this recipe. Can you turn it around and make it better? That's the way, way I was taught in high-end restaurants, low-end restaurants. You know, that's the way I was taught. And I'll tell you what, I do make it better. And I do. This is the way I am. Because my grandpa Garcia, he was he was a, set, a head chef in Milan. And when I heard about that, I said, well, I'm going to do what my grandpa did and be a chef. That's it. I'll see you guys in a few. Like and subscribe. Peace. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm back, guys. Here we go. Got the chicken. Nice and crispy. See how crispy that is? Nice and crispy. That one got the skin ripped off. Oh, well. Got some cheesy hash browns made with mozzarella. You still had mozzarella? Yep. Cauliflower medley. It's California blend. And homemade biscuits. That's everything that we have tonight. But I'll I'll give you guys the recipe down in the description below. Have Mama write it in, and uh, be all set for you guys. I'm making a little man's plate right now. Like I always do. Give him a little biscuit right there. See this. That's a little man's plate. He likes these pie tins. Little man sized biscuit. Yeah, he loves them pie tins. Him and his uncle both. Yep. So, that's one recipe down in the book for you guys. But, like and subscribe the video. And tell me what you think of it. And if there's any other new subscribers, please send me a message so I can uh, shout you out. And I appreciate it, you all. That subscribe. Keep on sharing these videos. I appreciate it. It'll help me out. So y'all have a great day. And I'll, you guys, God bless. And you have a great day. Peace.